Hey what's up guys here in the shop this morning we have an early start we're about to get in a nice full day of work but I have to make a bake apple and I need to make it within the next day or two so and you gotta account for an overnight glue up in there so you don't have all the time to work either of course so we're gonna get at it I figured I haven't shown you guys a knife video in a while you guys haven't seen me make one for a while don't think I haven't been at it I've been at it uh, flat out but yeah we're about to cut some steel So this is one inch wide by eighth inch thick O1 bar stock. O1 is my preferred material right now. And we are going to mark out bake apple. I've made a lot of bake apples <laughs> at this point in the game, which is awesome because I love, love this little knife. The bake apple is so good. I'm not surprised that people really enjoy it. So, marked out with a sharpie. Now we need to cut it out. A little update: the Milwaukee Porta band or the Milwaukee bandsaw is fantastic. If you're picking one up, make sure you get the deep cut. This is the deep cut version, so it's a, it has a deeper throat here. Can take larger material. I better suit up before I start cutting and grinding some steel. The coveralls are kind of a new thing for me. I've been using them now for probably four months or so. Never used them before that, but I love them. So cool to be able to wear nice clothes to the shop, or half decent clothes. But then if you need to do something dirty, you don't need to completely mess up your clothes for the rest of the day. You can throw on nice light pair coveralls like this. You're all set. When you're done, you just pull them off. you got to get in the truck or anything, you just slip them off. And your clothes are nice and clean and underneath. Let's get some safety equipment on the eyes. And definitely ear protection. This thing is so, so loud. It's ridiculous. Now a little bit of backstory about this bake apple knife. This is a boy's first knife. That's what the order is for and uh, it's getting stamped with his initials here. And we have it, as you can see there now, all ground in. So we have to stamp my maker's mark. We have to stamp the holes for the tang for the uh, pins. Let me go ahead and do that right now. So we'll drill out those. Um, let's stamp my maker's mark. So this is an exciting build, a boy's first knife. Doesn't get much more, uh, much more fun than that. And the bake apple is a fantastic choice for that as well. Of course, it's a nice small knife, easily handled. This makes it safe. Just a great knife. Beauty. Nice deep stamp. Looks great. Now, for the initials, let's get that. Now we'll get those two pinholes punched in. And then I'll drill several other holes at random, which is where 
which is where uh, the glue, the epoxy, will be allowed to bleed in. I always do that. I don't do it for weight reduction. Some people do it for that purpose. I don't do that. I don't think it's necessary. And I don't think it feels better. I like a weightier knife in the hand, but to each their own. Every maker is different, of course. That's what makes this game so fun. Everyone's got kind of their own tastes, their own style, their own patterns. It's a whole lot of fun. Now, I never heat up the forge and the quench tank for just one knife like this, but today I don't have a choice because I'm in a hurry. Here is our bake apple. All done heat treat. See those initials in there? My maker's mark on that side. It's looking good. I showed you the lighting up of the forge there, but uh, that's all I'm giving you. I can't give away all of my secrets. First thing I'm going to do here is uh, clean up the tang of the knife with a uh, random orbit sander and I'll just leave it like that because it creates a nice nice coarse finish for the for the scales to bite onto. <laughs> Now a little bit of hand sanding on the surface of this blade. The rest of the blade will get uh, will get brought in. The bevels. I'll have to regrind those on the on the grinder. But on the flats, we hand sand them in. Starting with 180 here, just to try it out. If it's not coarse enough, which I don't think it is, got a little bit of heavy mountain site build up there. So I'll go over to probably a 120. There it is, hand sanding up to 800 grit. You can see back here that kind of scratchy finish that's from uh, that orbital sander. But it's looking great. That's actually a super nice finish. Got a little bit of grease on it there now, but that looks great. Now we have to grind in the bevels. And since I freehand everything, this is the part that's always, always a little bit scary because we have this nice finish and uh, you'd like to be able to just copy right on top of that but <laughs> gets a little bit tough freehand you gotta watch you don't mire up your finish here you just have to start everything right from scratch again you hope you keep nice clean lines so I'm gonna get on the grinder there and see what I can do now you guys might be wondering why the the 1 by 30 here this is the grinder one of the belt grinders that I started with at the very start I find it um, for very finished grinding like this, if I don't have much steel to remove, those little small one inch belts and it's not turning quite as quickly or aggressively, I can get much more precise of a finish on those bevels. So that grinding went successfully up to a 600 grit. Now I'm going to use a felt wheel here. This one's not getting a mirror polish. Only up to 800 and then uh, on the flats and then 600 on the belt for the bevels. So we'll give them a little buff and this will put pretty much a final edge on the knife. This is just for those bevels now. Now if I've done a good job up to here, everything is super easy after this point. Well, easy for my skill set anyways. Some people might find the next steps more difficult. But this toughest part is done. You can see those bevels look absolutely beautiful with the polish there. I don't know if you'll be able to see, but it is razor sharp, shaving sharp there easily just wipe the hairs right off my arms now we get to tape that up keep it all nice and safe and we can get those scales prepped still a little chilly out in the shop here today it's 
why that epoxy is so thick but once it starts mixing if you didn't know once the chemicals mix they start generating heat and the heat is what cures them so quickly or, or the heat is a product anyways of the curing so if you do your glue up in cooler conditions you have a little longer to work the epoxy a little longer for assembly yeah you see it's getting real uh, if, you f if you could feel the cup there now it's real nice getting real nice and toasty but I should have plenty of work time because it's a little cooler here in the shop today this customer chose a beautiful um, I believe it's called a red coral red coral micarta which is very nice real, real nice classy stuff I'll fill in all those epoxy holes we drilled there now looks good I like it I like it a lot Okay, let's get the tools out here. And let's start making a sheath for this knife. So here's my template for the bake apple sheath. It's a lovely little sheath. Now ideally, you want to get really good at cutting leather because the better you are at cutting leather, the less cleanup work you have to do later on. So the closer you can be, the, the closer your templates are, to the final fit, the uh, the less custom fitting you have to do, and the less fiddling around and adjusting, and the less test fitting you have to do to your knife. Same thing with your knife templates. If you have, a, if I have a bake apple template, that's only just a rough template. Then every time you go to trace it out, you, you have to make little modifications and do little things to it and I don't want that I want to be able to just go ahead do the whole thing by template and not have to think about it Now you husbands better hide your wives because when this bell calava gets on you might lose them. Handsome devil. <laughs> we have some micarta grinding to do and it's going to get messy. Messiest part of the project right here. And here we have it, a dandy one day build. We have hand stitched leather sheath, got the bright red stitching with a mahogany die. We have our two eyelets here so we can pass a thread through, this will be a neck sheath. We have our lovely snap closure and we have that, uh, that red coral micarta, the stainless pins there and then that one eighth inch, look at that. 
that is one pretty blade. I don't know what your first knife looked like as a young boy, but I know mine certainly didn't look like this. That is beautiful, if I do say so myself. It is shaving sharp. The finish came out very nice. I really like that. Let me know in the comments section, what was your first knife? What do you remember being the first knife you ever have? Had, sorry. Thanks for watching. Hit that like button. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. If you're interested in ordering one of these for your own, a bake apple. This is called the bake apple. My neck knife, my own design, my own pattern I drew up there a couple of years ago. Made a lot of these, like I said. People seem to love them. But if you're interested in ordering one or another custom blade made by me, go ahead and email me. My email is down in the description there now. Thank you guys for watching. See you in the next video. Let's get that going back in the sheath. Hope you like it. See you next one, guys. Why don't we just keep the ball rolling here? Here's another one I just finished up. It's a 10 finish sheath with a wheat stitch. Brass rivets there. It's a friction fit. Check out this beauty. It's a bushcrafter. Like a, it's a high scandy, almost a saber grind, a mirror finished blade there. It's got uh, a fine line bucks, no, a fine line maple burl, I believe the scales are. Solid brass pins, eighth inch 01 steel. This is a beauty for sure. I, ab I really love this knife. It's basically my bake apple pattern, which is what we made today, but it's lengthened. So notice you still have that long straight back, that same simple profiled handle, and uh, yeah, just like an enlarged bake apple, but it feels so good in the hand. Awesome all around woods knife, camp knife, hunting knife. This is a beauty. Just while we're on the topic of availability there, I want to show you two kitchen blades I just finished up. I just did these kind of on a whim custom complete custom patterns done by me and they are available since they're custom one off um, no one's seen these yet so you're the first to see these and there they are let me show you them individually here we have both are in 1 16th 01 here we have a yellow micarta which is beautiful brown hand stitch sheath and that sheath stays on there we have little loops sewn in here and uh, a little bit of leather cord goes right around your handle. The design works well. I really like it. But let's get you to look at that blade there. <laughs> I think it's a lovely shaped blade. I'm definitely tracing off this pattern because it is awesome. I think it's going to work. Uh, I think people are really going to like it. We have a hand sanded finish there. There's that one. And then number two, here it is. We have a dark, a navy blue dyed sheath with a light blue, almost a neon blue stitch. And then notice the handle here. We have that bright blue micarta with white liners, which looks so, so sharp together. Same retention for this one. The knives come up and out. And here we actually have a black etched finish. This is an acid etch. That's why it's a little bit uneven, a little bit smudgy. That's just how it comes out in the etch. Both are uh, our flat grind. This one's a higher flat grind. Both come to a super thin edge. Last one back to the kitchen knives. This is my custom design Santoku. I have one of these myself. Uh, designed it for my exact preferences and it, 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 it performs outstandingly. Got that layered micarta handle scales, so good. The sheath came out great, black on black. Just check out this knife. We have a full polish, full flat grind. Check that out. Like I said, these are excellent performers. Really let you choke up on that blade. And uh, it just handles superb on the cutting board. I love it. You have that deep belly. And this portion back here acts like a, like a full-size chef's knife. Then you still have that fine tip because of the way it's ground. 
just so great in the hand.